Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what really happens uh, when your C program is compiled. So most times you'll throw it into the compiler, compiler will spit out an executable file, but there's actually a lot more steps uh, going on behind the scenes. I'm not going to go into, I'm not going to go in depth into all the steps, but I just want to give you a quick overview of what's going on. So the compiler doesn't just spit out an executable uh, after compiling your C program, and especially with C, there's a couple steps involved. So the first is pre-processing. Um, so first, you see these all the directives that start with hash, so hashtag define, uh, hashtag if, and hashtag include, and all those directives are handled by something called the preprocessor. So the C preprocessor is something that runs before the normal compilation, and it'll resolve things like including header files, macro definitions, and all of that. And after that, it steps into the normal compiler. So actually, if I, I can illustrate um, the header files, because yeah, so the dash E flag on GCC will just pre-process. So I can actually run that by going GCC main dot C dash E. And I should probably pipe that to a file because that's a lot. So if I go to my output file, this is what's outputted by the preprocessor. And you can see it's quite a bit uh, because, and here's my main function right down here. Uh, and it's a lot because the preprocessor has in included this header file into the whole compilation. And this header file is pretty vast. So that's just showing you that first the preprocessor runs before actually starting to compile the code. So after that, after we pre-process that, then the actual, like the normal C compiler runs. So the first step of compiling is gathering, like, it's basically lexical analysis. So it gathers individual tokens of the code. So for example, int right here is a token. Main is a token. This open parentheses is a token. This closed parentheses is a token. This bracket is a token. So you can see how it goes on. And after that, the compiler uses those tokens and how they're organized to do what's known as parsing. So it'll parse all those tokens into some sort of syntax tree. And yeah, so it'll parse those into some sort of syntax tree, which that syntax tree shows basically the, the semantics of the code. So after it parses into that syntax tree, then it's going to start generating code. And it doesn't generate machine code right away. What it generates is assembly code. So I can show you that by passing the dash s flag. And I'm just going to, whoops, what is main.c dash s. And uh, I'm going to use Intel syntax because I, I think it's a little cleaner. So we have our main.s, this is our assembly file, and this is the assembly that the compiler has outputted for our main function. So somewhere in here, you can see a call to puts. Right there is our call to puts, and right before that, it's loading our string lc0, our string hello world, right here, and then it's calling puts. So you can see that right there, this is the assembly outputted by GCC. And then after it compiles to assembly, it will compile to a format known as object code. And I'm going to continue with our main.s. You can generate object code by passing a dash c flag. Well, I believe this is the right flag. This, sorry, it's lowercase c. So you can see our main.o is outputted. Uh, if I open it with a normal text editor, it is, 
it is just binary data. It's just, this is the object code. It's almost there. It's basically machine code. A lot of this is machine code, but it's not in a format that's ready to be executed. For example, I can't just, I can't just main dot O. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, um, it's not running. It's not writing hello world. So you can't exactly do that. However, uh, this format needs to be linked and linking is a process where it takes all of, all of this code, all of this object code and combines it with other object files, other static libraries. So those are the dot lib and dot a files and compiles it with all those libraries, all those object files, groups and compiles it together until it resolves all of the symbols and then it's put into an, uh, an executable format. On, on Linux, it's ELF, the executable linking format, uh, the executable and linking f uh, linkable format. And on Windows, it's PE, the portable executable format. But I want to show you something. If I try to use LD, which is the uh, GNU linker, if I try to use this and I try to just link main.o into an executable, you're going to see there's a couple errors. First is an undefined reference to main because um, there's a, there's a, it should be prefixed with two, uh, if we're compiling a C program, it should be prefixed with these two underscores. I won't get into that. But the second error is uh, most important, which is that there's an undefined reference to puts. If you go back to main.s, there's no like there's no definition for puts. We have our definition for our main function, but it doesn't know where puts is. Uh, if I had, um, if you've ever used NASM before, so the netwide assembler. I could create a file called uh, whatever my dot ASM it doesn't matter, but at the top, at the top of NASM, if you want to let's say import a function from another library, you usually say extern at the top, and then you put the name of the function. But right now, if I compiled something like that, or for example my main dot s, there's no definition. Although it's calling puts, it doesn't know where puts is, and it doesn't know where to find it. And so that's why LD is complaining because it doesn't know where to find puts. And this is important because puts is located in the C standard library. And this is where the importance of linking comes in. Because you can compile all these files to be almost ready to execute. And you can keep them in reserve until you get that other piece of code that allows you to execute it. In this case, the piece of the program that we're missing is the C standard library, which contains the definition and the code for puts. So that's what GCC will link against for us if I just, if I don't pass it any flags, if I just say out main.exe. And then when we run as, as expected, we get our hello world. And so linking allows us to basically have all these libraries and yeah so have all these libraries pre-compiled and link and we can link against them when we need to and from there also comes the idea of dynamically linked libraries or shared shared object files uh, as they might be called on Linux which are basically libraries with code that can be loaded or it's it's code and symbols that can be loaded at runtime, hence the name dynamically linked. So that's it for today's video on you know, the compilation process and C. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.